the DC2 or the D46 or even myself could be in a lot better position in the world if I didn't choose to do MR2 racing so much. But Good evening. Welcome to a casual chat about my race season 2020. My first full race season. Wasn't an amateur this year, not quite. I did start with a novice sticker on, first few races, but yeah, this was my first real go at being a racing driver. In an MR2. In this MR2. Mm. Now I did do a couple of events in 2020. I did Silverstone and my car was horrendously slow. So I skipped a couple of events and tried to make my car faster. And then I did the final two rounds last year at Alton and Donington, which actually went okay-ish. The car was more competitive, but I did some more things over winter to try and just get it to its absolute peak of what, you know, I could manage. And, you know, the car is pretty much all me. You know, there's been a few things that I've had to get help with from friends, but the majority of the mechanical work has, uh, has been done by myself, so there's some pride in that. So I did quite a lot over winter, just odds and sods, gearbox work, and played with the air filter and tried to get everything just right so I could be as competitive as what I could for the 2021 season. I started the season knowing that I was gonna try and enter every single round. I entered them all before the race season even started. I, I booked every event earlier this year. Uh, didn't wanna leave anything up to chance. I thought I'll book the events and then I'll make it happen. And I did. And as I said, it wasn't so successful all the time, but I managed to get there to, to every round, all eight of them. You know, I took part, had a go. So yeah, I was pretty chuffed with that part of it, but certain things could have been better. So get comfortable. It's probably gonna be a bit of a long video. Dog's getting comfortable. I want you to be comfortable. Just relax. Let's look back at the past year, the highs and the lows. Let's not waste any more time. First round, Cadwell Park. So the first round at Cadwell Park could have been so much better. Anyone who's watched the channel for a little bit, or you might have seen some of my other videos in various cars. I've done a lot of track time at Cadwell Park. It's probably the circuit where I've got the most experience at. I know it reasonably well. I was really looking forward to racing there because I thought, you know, almost a home advantage. It's not my local circuit by any means. It's still, you know, a good two hours away. It's, 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 it's pretty far from anyone really, Cadwell Park, but I knew I had a bit of an advantage because I love the track and I've got a good bit of experience there. Now, unfortunately, the day didn't quite go to plan. In qualifying, someone had an accident really early on and the qualifying ended up getting finished on the safety car. So unfortunately, my qualifying position was terrible. I don't know exactly where I was, but I'll put it on screen somewhere, but I wasn't happy. And then in the first race, I was going all right, but I was a bit too hesitant. Cadwell's a really tight track. And you know, my, my race experience up to that point was still quite small. I'd done a few races, but you know, I wasn't very aggressive and I didn't really push as hard as what I should have done. So I finished in a really mediocre place. Not, I thought I'd be in the top 10 easily at Cadwell, but I don't think I was anywhere near in the first race. The second race was over before it even started.
there was a big crash. It was one of the worst crashes that I've seen all year. Um, a couple of drivers involved. I even got a clip at one point. A lot of cars getting a lot of damage on that on that second race so that race was called off and yeah that was it from Cadwell Park wasn't very good at all looks like the smash was pretty brutal to say the least we've got cars everywhere just absolutely I don't know if you can see it on the camera but rear quarter just the whole side of that one's gone this one's like a for banana driver must have been shitting his pants because it's raining on his door bar there front end of that one gone. There's another one behind the truck that you can't see that's also paggered. Big incident. I was really looking forward to it. Obviously all winter I was thinking, yeah, this first event, Cadwell Park, you know, home advantage, I'm gonna smash it, but no, no, I didn't, didn't do so well. All right, quick damage report after that. This luckily pulled itself off when I was pulling in. You might have heard it on the video it gave me a bit of binding to start with but that's popped out but it, it should pop back in lovely i did get some pumped on here um yeah, a bit of tire mark on the rim as well but yeah, apart from that not too bad could have been worse she had the full fucking pump has it really oh dear I guess. It cut out the car still here. Yeah. But some of the cars down there were proper hammered, so. The event after Cadwell Park was Donington. And this is where things kind of turned a page a little bit. Than ideal. Yeah, it was going real well and then it just wasn't. We had two races again. Each one of these rounds we have two races, two sprint races. They're 15 minutes plus one lap, right? Donington things went differently. The first race was okay. It was, it was kind of wet and I did okay. I, I was pretty happy with my performance. But the second race, that's when I started realising I've got a bit of pace now. So initially the leaders almost started breaking away, but I found myself able to keep up. I don't know what I was doing differently. I was just trying to drive as fast as obviously what I could, as I do any time I'm driving on track. But this time I was keeping up. Um, I was with the fast group for, you know, a good bulk of that race. Now we did end up finishing that race with a mechanical failure. This is when the, the wheel decided to crack in four out of the five spokes, but I wasn't disappointed at all. I was a bit, you know, a bit miffed off that I didn't get to finish the race in the position that I was in. But it proved to me that, hey, hang on, I can hang with these guys. And, you know, my car might not be perfect, but it was up there. A couple of times this year, I did manage to get into that fast group and almost, almost hang with them. So despite that mechanical failure, I came away pretty happy from Donington. I don't know where I scored in the end in the first race. The second race was a DNF, obviously with a mechanical failure, but you know, it wasn't so bad. Um, I was quite happy with, with where I finished. And then the race after that, which was Brands Hatch. Now this is where things really started getting quite good. Brands Hatch, I can't remember where I finished in the first race. I 
I think I was up there. You know, I'm not, not, not doing too, I think I got a 58.2 or something like that, Brands Hatch Indy. And yeah, I ended up finishing third in one of the races. I didn't realise at the time I was third, but I thought I'd finished fourth to start with. And then uh, I remember Kev was there and uh, Max was there as well. And they were just, they were absolutely buzzing with the, the P3. And I thought, well. In third place, <laughs> podium. Yeah, I got a podium at Brands Hatch, so that was the third round. Yeah, I was absolutely buzzing. It was, you know, it can only go well from here, right? Wrong. The next event, Snetterton. Some new markings on the sponsorship and my door has stuck a bit of a battering. That's new. That's definitely new. That's new. And that's new. Yep, that's new. This is also new. Now I had driven Snetterton before. Um, it was quite a long time ago. It was about 2015 in the DC2 maybe even earlier than that, no, about 2015 will be about right. I had driven it before, but Snetterton, it was a 300 circuit. It's the longest circuit on our calendar. It's a three mile circuit, I think. That's what the 300 stands for. It's the longest one, right? So when you've got a long circuit and you've got people who know the long circuit, let's just say I was quite a bit off pace. I qualified mid pack, if not worse. It was not a great day at all. I was kind of overdriving the car, you could say. I didn't have the experience um, of the circuit. I was about three or, three or four seconds off the pace of the fast, fast people per lap. So, you know, I mean, the, the people that I was racing with mostly had a good time. You know, it wasn't too bad, but yeah, it was, it was a really hard day. And it's the only time all year where I've actually considered not entering the second race just going home because I felt absolutely terrible. It was, it was such a weird day. And then when I got in the, in the five series to drive home, about an hour into my journey home, I just, almost like someone had flicked a switch. I was, I was suddenly fine again. It was really strange, um, really strange day at Snetterton. And yeah, I didn't score that well at all. I think I finished in the teens, you know, which was all right to say. You know, it's probably the circuit which I had the, the least experience of out of them all this year. Now that's us at the half point of the season, right? We've done four rounds and I've done okay-ish. You know, I've had two DNFs, Cadwell and Donington. Um, Brands Hatch, I had my best finish. And then Snetterton brought me back down to earth because I had a really hard time there. Um, the next four events were Somewhat better, we've got Silverstone International, which I'd raced at before. Um, it's where I did my first ever race. I was looking forward to going back there to compare just how much more performance I got out of myself and the car. Second, second place finish of the season, Daniel Sylvester just about gets his car straightened up again. I knew I was going to be a lot faster when I went back. I think I ended up being about three seconds a lap quicker um, this year compared to, to last year when I did my first event. So big improvement there. I was, I, was, I was well chuffed with that. The first race went really well. I had a, a really good battle with uh, Cam Walton in the Mark II. Um, it started raining towards the end of the first race. I remember that and uh, I ended up getting sniped towards the end by I think it was Paul Cook in another Mark II. So I think I finished around sixth, but I had a good starting position for the second race. And um, yeah, the start of the second race went reasonably well as well. But unfortunately, as you've all seen by now, I had the, the quite bad accident, which was another DNF.
Right, so the next event was Castle Coombe, which was another circuit a bit like Snetterton, which I had done once before a long time ago in the Integra on a track day, but didn't know that well. But the difference with Castle Coombe, I managed to get a track day there just a couple of days before as well. So I went down with, with Kevin and uh, Sai came along as well, two DC5s and obviously Tiff in his, uh, in his prime era. So there's a, there's a video on that as well you might have seen. Um, I felt like I had some good pace and it did kind of pay off. I, I think I qualified reasonably well. I, I wasn't up there like way up there, but I think I qualified reasonably well and the racing itself ended up being some of the best racing. I, I dare say Castle Coombe out of all of the events was, was the best racing for me, the, the, the best time, the, the most fun and I certainly did some of my best driving as well. Really enjoyed Castle Coombe. I can't remember exactly where I finished um, in, in either race, the first or second, but I definitely finished both races. And I scored high enough in the second race where I think I got second in class C, so I got another trophy. So that was really good to get, get the trophy from Castle Coombe. I wasn't expecting to, to finish where I did. I just had a really good day. I, just, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that one. It was just, just really good racing. I think. Out of all the videos, out of all the race vlogs, I think the Castle Coombe one's probably the best just because I was having a good time, uh, the car was going really well and yeah, the, the racing was really, really tight, really close and Castle Coombe's a, a great track, by the way. I said it in my track day video, I think I might even said it in the race video that people on the internet, I've seen the people on the internet say Castle Coombe's a bit boring but it's, uh, it's a pretty wild track to, to try and drive flat out. It's, um, it's real good. Right, so we're on to the second to last event now, which was Brands Hatch again. So we're going back to the indie circuit. Brands Hatch we went to twice in 2021. This was the second time. Now, as we know, I had my best ever finish at Brands Hatch uh, earlier in the year. So going back, I was pretty full of confidence, especially considering I'd just got the trophy at Castle Coombe as well. I knew I had the pace, I knew I had the car, and I was pumped up, I was ready for it. Now, that might sound pretty familiar to a certain event at the start of the season, Cadwell Park. Another event where I was pumped up, full of confidence, thinking that I can definitely get a good result here. Now, there's a theme there because Brands Hatch was another terrible day. Qualified pretty well, did, a, did an all right qualifying. Beat my uh, personal best from last time, I was driving faster. Um, I did a few things to the car and obviously myself to try and, to try and get there. I, I think I knocked about half a second off my fastest lap from the previous time, so you know, I was pretty chuffed with that. I had a problem in qualifying where I popped my radiator, so I had to change that. Uh, luckily managed to scrounge a spare off another racer. I uh, got the car all patched up onto the grid for race one. Now this event had such a tremendous high 
of getting to P2 in the race. Very briefly, I was in second position in the race, but then it all came crashing down when my gearbox let go. And then we didn't have enough time to, to replace the gearbox for race two. So I never even started race two. In race one, I beat my personal best again. I went even faster in race uh, one. I, I would have been like third or fourth on the grid for race two, which would have been my best ever start. Um, but yeah, the gearbox let go in race one and it wasn't terminal, it was for the gearbox, but I managed to finish the race um, had to just use third and fifth gear. I completely lost fourth gear. I ended up finishing 10th because I had this real gnarly slide at Paddock Hill and lost a lot of positions. I was holding people up for a couple of laps, just trying to finish in that top five. And um, yeah, I ended up having quite the off. Managed to recover it out of the gravel, didn't flip the car or anything. But yeah, I finished the race and I was, <laughs> I was pretty surprised actually that I got to the end, but I knew I had to rush, get the spare gearbox in as quick as I could. We had about 80, 90 minutes or so to change the gearbox. Uh, ended up getting scrutinied after race one as well, which cost me about 10 minutes or so. And yeah, the, the stars just didn't align. We, uh, we, we tried to get it changed over. Um, I've changed the gearbox on this car a lot of times, but never against the clock. And even with three of us on it, yeah, we didn't get it done. So we needed about another 10 minutes in the end and I'd have been on the grid for race two, but unfortunately the, the gap between race one and race two was, was just not enough. So another DNF. Well, it's not even a DNF because I didn't start. So I think that's just a, I don't even know what that counts as. It's not a DNF, it's a non-starter. I don't know. The bottom line is it's another round where I didn't score any points. So yeah, really disappointing second uh, round at Brands Hatch. Uh, we had some really good pace, you know, I was up there, I beat my personal best. I was going around Brands Hatch in 57s, 57 seconds. Remember earlier in the video where I said I'd done quite a lot of work um, in winter last year. Uh, I did some things to the gearbox to try and make it optimal and I made an error and the car lasted all the way up until the second to last round with that um, fault in the gearbox and showed no symptoms up until the point of it completely letting go that fourth gear but I've learned a lot from from things like that why do we fall Bruce so we can learn to pick ourselves back up so we'll not be making that mistake again um, it was a real letdown a real disappointing day uh, but you know the highs and lows of racing hey yeah so on to the last event then, which was Alton Park. Daniel Sylvester's right in the middle of all of this, so he's gaining positions now, or so trying to at least, and we've kind of, I think, just about got away with all of that. There's Sylvester, the red car, up on the inside of number 84, Neil Stratton, yet yeah, he's made that move stick. So he's the big gainer in all of yeah, that. He's so. in the sort of right place at the right time. And he's now going to be the one to try and find a way past Sam Harper, who's has been doing a great job at holding them all off, but he's spinning and he's going to just touch the rector cell barrier. <laughs> Daniel Sylvester's made a good start, something like eight, isn't he? That wasn't my best race, was it? Yeah, that's a bit, bit more bent in than what it used to. We're on to the last one, I promise. Last one. So Alton Park's another one which I don't have a, a tremendous amount of experience with, but I do really like the circuit. I've done a couple of track days there. Really enjoy the circuit. It's, it's a really wicked place, Alton Park. So again, I had quite a lot of confidence uh, going into it and didn't do too badly in the first race from what I remember. You remember where we finished on the first race? We did, we did all right, didn't we? we? We weren't breaking any records by any means, but. It was the last event. I was on my UK spec gearbox with the long ratios, you know, a suboptimal setup, let's say, right? And I think I did all right. I was, I was enjoying it. Um, but the second race, again, I had some mechanical problems. And the worst bit about these mechanical problems were, well, just like the gearbox, it was self-inflicted. I had fuel starve.
I've had issues with this car all the time I've owned it. I've had issues with the fuel gauge and I keep thinking I fixed it and then I realize that I haven't fixed it. And this is one of those times where I realized I hadn't fixed it because the car was telling me it had just over a quarter of a tank and um, we put, I think we put about seven litres in it or so before race two, which would have put me on, which would have put me on about a third of a tank or so. Um, but in reality, I only had about five litres in the tank or maybe about 10 litres after putting that seven in. So yeah, I had a lot less fuel than what the fuel needle was saying. The fuel gauge on the dashboard was saying I had a lot more fuel than what I actually had. Again, it's another thing that I'll, I'll not do again. You know, seem to be a bit of a theme on this channel. If you're new, we seem to uh, learn mostly by failing, which, you know, is, is, it's not the worst way to learn, but there's certainly the better ways to learn. As much as I try and learn from others, I seem to be making quite a lot of mistakes myself and uh, it's, it's, it's really difficult, this racing stuff. It's, it's a complete different ball game to track days or anything like that. It's, it's really engaging for sure. It's, 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 you know, I've got cars, as you know, sitting around, quite nice cars, if I may say so myself, which have just been kind of pushed to the side recently, the past 18 months or so. And I've been focusing on a car which I don't really like that much. I don't, I, MR2 is a, okay. They're not, <laughs> you know, the, the one up from MX5s obviously, but they're, they're nothing too special really, are they? And they're not really my kind of car by definition, but MR2 racing, if you would have told me three or four years ago when I was, you know, just got this and had my E36 and I had the DC2 and everything and you know reasonably fast cars if you'd have told me that I would have such fun racing a Mark III MR2 I'd have thought what are you actually on about like no chance yeah it's been really fun obviously we did the Burkitt relay as well to end the series which out of nowhere we ended up winning our class but that was a big team effort not really something I want to focus on in this video. It was quite recent and I did do a full video on it, but yeah, this car and myself, we, we took part in a, a team of, of, of four, three other drivers, three other MR2s, and we ended up winning our class at the Burkitt Relay Race, which was a, a six hour endurance race. So yeah, a real happy end to the season, a happy end for the car. Still not sure what's going to happen to this car yet, You'll have probably seen my video talking about, you know, whether or not I should get a Mark II <laughs> um, or whether or not I should get a new shell or whether or not I should just keep going. I'm still not sure. I still want to keep racing for sure. It's a completely different ball game to, to track days or anything. Something that I can't imagine not doing though. And I certainly wish I'd have got involved a bit sooner. One of the big things to be fully aware of is it's it's a big financial uh, I was going to say investment but I don't know if investment's the right word there's a there's a big cost to it and I'm doing it on the absolute cheapest I can MR2 racing there's there's not many series out there which are as cost effective as the MR2 championship but it still cost me quite a lot of money thousands and thousands of pounds which you know the DC2 or the D46, or even myself, could be in a lot better position in the world if I didn't choose to do MR2 racing so much. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it. So that's just kind of how my life is now. So that was my recap anyway. Hope you've enjoyed watching. It's probably been fun to make. It'll have been very long to make because I've had to get clips from eight different days and each one of those videos from the race day usually takes like 15 to 30 depending on uh, how long the video is hours of editing it takes a long time to put those videos together fucking too right mate they're, they're fun i enjoy doing it i enjoy the racing more but i do enjoy making the videos as well so thanks for the support thanks to the patreons there's a lot of patreon subscribers who 
subscribe to me just because of the racing, which is nice. They want to support my racing and uh, people that buy the merch as well. Grateful. And yeah, hopefully 2022 we'll um, learn from the fool's mistakes and not make so many ourselves, but new chapter really, because we're going to be racing the Integra. So there'll be more unknowns to deal with, but we will be doing a f at least a few rounds of MR2 racing as well. I don't think we'll be doing the full calendar again like this year, but there should still be some, uh, some good racing to come. So like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Goodbye.